Hi there, I'm Matt Holland and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here really just to dissect that last night's game against France. Um, yeah, <laughs> dissect is a good word. Yeah, it does, it's really chopping in half really for, for the little quality that was in it. Look, it was an indes, it was an indes, it's, uh, indes season friendly, it was everything that the cliches had. But look, I'm joined by the, the usual guys, Brian Nick and of course we all know Paul. Um, yeah, look, folks, there's no point in trying to bluff this one up a bit. Let's just get dug in and try and talk it through. And I suppose we'll start off as always with the lineup, a typical Martin O'Neill lineup. Yeah, very. Um, would you would yeah. you guys agree? You know, very disjointed. I thought. I mean, the midfield three was bizarre. I mean, O'Dowd is a winger and he was playing centre mid. Mm -hmm. um, I think Brown's more of a number ten, playing a little bit further right. And uh, Rice, I thought did well. Rice, yeah. Rice, be fair. Rice is always going to do well. Like, yeah. He's an excellent footballer. Very comfortable. Um, very young, very comfortable on the ball, but and he was playing in a, in a good, natural good enough future position for him. England centre half as well. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, He was saying they had been yeah. built in the end. Yeah, Paul, you tweeted at the time actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was there, around was like, very refreshing. Yeah, yeah. very refreshing. But, to yeah, see. Have to look. players didn't, and he was he was one of few. I didn't even see Coleman singing it at one point. No, well, we were talking this last night. I, I think it was Stephen Gerrard was talking about it a few years ago, and he was like the anthem when it came on. He was like. I was so in the zone that mm -hmm. the last thing I wanted to be doing was singing a song. I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I wasn't. So, great, so I was no, yeah. saying, uh, it, was, it was nice to see him proudly singing. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, the John Walters on the right. Walters hasn't played all season. You know, he's he's on an age. Mm -hmm. He's carrying a bit of an injury. I suppose. And that, you, you know, to pick you know what would have made more sense is to have Long out right and Long yeah, absolutely. Yeah, possibly. Long has I don't that. understand. And Long's played there too, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I don't yeah. understand. It's been a constant thing where Walters always plays to the right. And I know I just think of this long ball up to the kind of right hand Flick side and yeah. to the corner, and he might hold it up or whatever. But why not have him as your target mm -hmm. man? Have I long, suppose if you're going to do Walters that. defensively is might be a bit sounder than the long defensively. Yeah. But he, he dips into the pockets, Walters. Like he's almost like your your second right back, which is you know a little bit unnecessary. Yeah, but there was a point where Long actually got back and the defended across at one point throughout the game. Anyway, but yeah. um, in terms of the lineup itself, we had Doyle and Goals, which mm -hmm. I just didn't see any point in him playing. Um, when you've got two keepers there that were called in, I mean Doyle's, he's had his run. He's playing for Bradford or something like that. Yeah, he's playing and for you know he's never really done that or kicked on. He's, he's hitting thirty now. You know Randolph's always going to be ahead of him in the pecking order. So I just don't <coughs> like unless it was a token gesture. To, to bring him in and not mm -hmm. like. Oh, Randolph had surgery today. He did, yeah, yeah. I didn't actually know he was no, injured before. It was kind of kept under wraps. Yeah, yeah. I think, and it was kind of like, why is Randolph an FTS squad? So He'd he been nursing about an injury for about seven months What's on his name? Instagram, it said. Um, yeah. Because you had, yeah. I suppose he was playing in a playoff semi final as well yeah. twice, so that could they probably didn't want to be like, oh, Randolph's injured because then the Middlesbrough fans would be like, what do you mean he's injured? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah I, think, um, I think we were better on keepers. I mean, like, I think O'Malley. Um, you know, O'Malley was in, I'm thinking of Lawler, you know Lawler who was with yes, City, yeah, yeah. uh, O'Hara was in there and the two of them uh, were injured, so they're two decent options, I know they're playing, I mean O'Hara's not playing first team, but Lawler looks a seriously good keeper, mm, yeah. and like he's playing at the same he's level, he's building his career back up, yeah he, he is and he did the right thing leaving City I think, but he's playing at the same level as O'Malley, and I actually think he's about 10 times the keeper of O'Malley. Um, well, O'Malley was playing at Pats last season wasn't he? Yeah, all like, in fairness to, to, to O'Malley I thought he was brilliant with Pats, but uh, Judging by the, I don't think no, no, I, can't, I can't judge on the Celtic match. But I don't I think Doyle actually had rugby. a bad game yesterday. Like he actually he, pulled off a lot of good saves. He made a really good save in Giroud. Bad conditions. Half. Obviously, the second yeah. goal we'll was. Talk about that later. Is it? Is it? Is what you can call a carries, but like, he didn't actually do too badly. You know, it's got a cliche name. Got a cliche name after four days, but like well, he didn't that's, do that's, that's got to sit deep in the wounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> even his shape reminds me a bit of David Ford. He's just kind of a big, big bulky kind of awkward. Well, I'm happy for him that he got a couple of caps. Well, like, he'll probably yeah, never play. He, he might play at the weekend. Yeah, he won't play. He won't play competitively. I don't no. believe anyway. But I just thought, you know, if you're gonna, you know, play Doyle again, like he did against Turkey, you know, at least give one of the other, one of the other guys a half. Maybe. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that, that was a strange one for me. But mm. the other thing, then, just going back to the the lineup was, was Williams making his debut. What, yeah. did, what did you guys think of his performance? Yeah. Fantastic game. Um, yeah. He looked solid. Did, one of the bright, out kind of shining lights really of our, of our performance. Really, yeah. I thought. He didn't look out of depth at all because, you know, we're looking at that position. Stephen Ward, obviously, he had mm -hmm. a nightmare against Denmark. And probably, other than that, hasn't really put that much of a foot wrong and he, and he, he has got a he's lot of bad a press. As well, isn't he? Mm -hmm. but, but he's still doing well. Like He's finished seventh with Burnley and that's, mm -hmm. I think, out of all our players, I think Burnley finished 
in, in terms of the squad. Yeah. Uh, and he was playing most games. So I think he was one of the best Irish performers in the Premier League this year. But when he played for Ireland, uh, you know, obviously the wheels came apart. The wheels, he just, it was just that one game, though. Yeah, yeah, but you'd still like, you know, this left back has been a position. You'd even wind it back to, to Kilban, where we don't seem to have a lot of options for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I think it was refreshing to see. When you only bring it back to Ian Hart and Dennis Irwin, yeah. the only ones of note that were. Exactly, there was a lot of options. Kilban was a decent winger. But it's great because even, like, William started last night, but there's three. Um, left yeah. backs in the squad. I was happy so, about that too. Yeah, but like Cunningham, Stevens, and Williams. Yeah. And Williams, out of the three, you would have said had the least chance. Because I think Cunningham, I was saying to Brian earlier, like, I mean, he's not as good as Coleman, but he's the same type of style, like kind of attacking fullback, fairly solid. Um, and I thought he would have started. But Williams, I mean, I mean, he put a couple of nice crosses in as yeah, well, you know, like he got forward, stuck in, fairly solid, put a lot of nice tackles in. He was up a, against. But he was up against a, a, a Mbappe, and I mean, you know, yes. didn't have much joy against really him, to be honest. Yeah. Who was that he crunched in the tackle? Was it Mbappe? Was oh it? no, it wasn't Tuliso, I think. It yeah. was when they were attacked. Yeah, it was yeah. a great tackle. Um, but yeah. It was completely Roy the Rover stuff. Yeah. You, know, you see this, this yeah. Irish guy up against well. Mbappe. And but I remember, I remember watching him in the, I think it was the under 19 Euros. And I remember thinking he looks a seriously good player. And I think he was kind of on the periphery of the Villa squad. Yeah. And then I think he left Villa by his own choice, I think. Um, whoever, be, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whoever was there at the time wanted to keep him on, and he said, "No, I'm gonna drop down to League One with Bristol." And then he went on to Blackburn, and apparently, he's, well, apparently he's been really good. He had a, you know, he had a good Blackburn got promoted. Yeah, yeah. We were having this conversation about Conor Herr, and he obviously wasn't involved. He was there, but he wasn't involved. And kind of saying, "Would you rather the players be playing in a team that's going to be winning?" You know, kind of week in, week out, not so much winning week in, week out, but there's a lot of confidence in there. Or going up to a league like her hand, not getting promoted to the Premier League and getting beaten every second week and not getting as much play and not getting as much create, creative uh, ball, maybe, in, in, the, in, the, in the Premier League. We're saying, well, you know, he'll be a big fish in a, in a small pond, I suppose, in the Championship again. But he might, is, he might get a move, like Alan Brown. He might get a move, you know, could Brown do, yeah. a very good end to the season too. But you know, because we, 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 it's... World Cup coming up and stuff like that. I think a lot of transfers are kind of stalled. They'll just about after. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they might get a move. Like I haven't heard any rumors or that they will, but they might. Yeah. But just in terms of the the rest of the defense, I can't really argue with Coleman Long and Duffy. I think picks himself really, doesn't it? Yeah. I think yeah. I like Kevin Long, and yeah, he's coming out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's so right. Yeah. Um, he was great against um, great against Austria. Yeah, 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 with was, with Duffy. Yes. Uh, Clark's been kind of out of sorts. But for me, the, injured, thing, so. the thing that really told for me. Is you look at Duffy when he played when we played France in the Euros and he kind of looked like a real nervous kid mm. and you looked at him last night he was coming commanding and winning headers he was beating Giroud in the air yeah. a lot of the time obviously not for the goal but um, you know for most of the game he was he was giving it just as much to Giroud and I, I just thought it was nice to see because we were talking about them being so much better than us and we're just looking out of our depth but it just goes to show that some of our players are coming on leave to bound that year in the Premiership really seemed to help yeah Duffy. it did full of confidence go back yeah. to the point you touched on there there's, yeah. a, there's a player that's albeit in the Premier League he's got his opportunity he's playing week in week out you can see he's full of confidence and his game like I'll confess I thought a year or two ago I thought he's got a limit as a Sloppy player sort of yeah. right. no, it was um, concentration yeah, that was I would actually say as, even as far as Going back to the Austria game at home, I was thinking he's a year ago. Yeah, mm. a year ago I was like, no. Yeah, he was poor that game. It looked yeah. like the, he always. I know he should have had a goal though. Yeah, should have, but yeah, I was thinking. Mm. But definitely, you know, um, a really, really confident. You know, you can see that streak of form that he's brought on from the Premier League, and long may continue. But the, the performance itself, I have to be honest, guys. It was. I know the weather conditions were awful, and the the coverage. Well, I mean, finish pick of the team. You you finished with you want a bit more yeah well yeah. we've only picked the back four okay right go keep, uh, keep on going keep your keep favorite part the, mid, keep, the midfield keep, keep, three keep that you might happy about who who d who was not happy about or yeah. uh, well like Brown Adam I mean the two of us were having a bit of a go Brown like I, I I watch a lot of championship and I watch a good bit of pressing and obviously they play a completely different system to Ireland but I mean. Brown was just so sloppy, and I just feel like he's going to be one of these players that O'Neill's just going to keep picking and picking and picking and picking. And um, judging on last night, yeah, the conditions weren't great, but I mean, there was two two throw-ins in attacking positions uh, early, and like logged half. both of them into into touch. And then I think like two minutes after one of the throw-ins, uh, he intercepted the ball and nearly went into went went past Doyle. Yeah, he you did know, the just, cross came in and just he sloppy things like kicked it the wrong way. Yeah. Like. like he looks like he looks very nervous. I thought he looked very out of his depth against Turkey. 
and I thought he looked extremely out of his depth. So his question is, what, what did he? Did you guys think he felt out? Of, he looked out of depth last night. I felt yes. He did. Oh, absolutely. I I think he'll grow into it. Like I think, and as you said, Paul, like he could get a move. Yeah, um, but it took it took yeah. uh, just on that point of midfield. It took Harry Arthur a long time. Absolutely, it still is. Well, he's well, still probably is. Just yeah, he's still taking a bit and Myler as well. You we know? saw the difference when Myler and Arthur came on last night. So all of a sudden they were up at players. They were putting pressure mm. on them. It was kind of a high, more high tempo, a tight tempo game. And when Myler and Arthur came in, the conditions had completely deteriorated. Mm. So they were getting up there, whereas, you know, Brown and who else was in the middle yesterday? Oh, Dowd. Oh, Dowd. Oh, Dowd. Yeah, 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 he's like, a winger, yeah. to be fair. But, you know, they, uh, Brown was just, yeah. he was out of his depth last night, completely out of his depth. Yeah. And oh, now, yeah. as you said, he's playing in week in, week out in Preston in a different system where he's more attacking. And considering the calibre of players, and he's the main man there, really. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I mean, I would doubt it seemed to be the one that was. O'Neill wants to be the main man in there. That's what it seems. But does like. anyone at this table <coughs> think that if we're in need of a bit of inspiration, that you're going to turn to Alan Brown in a big game? Sadly not. Not yet. I think this 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 time for him, more games he gets in that kind of you know that atmosphere, you know, get used to those types of stadiums, and. Um, I think he can grow into that, but mm. at the moment he's just not showing it. Yeah, yeah. He looks very tidy for Preston, mm. but I mean, no, I've been impressive yeah. for Preston, but you know. But I remember just, even even against Turkey, he was just, I mean, similar to even Hendrick, in his last thirty-ish caps, just panic stations. Yeah. And then even last night, I just felt simple, basic things that he is capable of just weren't pulling off. I don't know if that was nerves. I, I, he looked there besides that it was. You know? I would also say that the two players he was playing in beside, including himself, it was three so inexperienced. Yeah, and I'll do it. Who's the other midfielder? It was Rice, Rice no doubt. Like, it was down. Rice, I mean, like all yeah. three of them, they they kind of needed someone like Myler in there to yeah. kind of put his arm to say, calm down. Like, the anchor you know, man. Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. even Arthur. Just yeah. the ball. Yeah, like I don't know why. I mean, Odeuda should be tested as a winger because he's a winger, you know. And I mean, he's 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 brilliant on the ball, and I think O'Neill just wanted someone. In the midfield to put their foot in it and just to drive. There was moments where, where O'Dowd did drive at the um, French back four and he did all right. I think I one instance in the first half when the ball just got away from him at the end. But he like, took too many touches, I think. Yeah, you know, he, he, yeah. he showed. I, I really do think that Colin O'Dowd is the future. I think O'Neill fancies him as kind of. And, and we watched a few, few clips before the game yesterday, and he plays these lovely little three balls from the kind of number 10 position. Like, yeah. I think he's more, I think he's a I very. I think he's going to use him like a Robbie Brady sort of thing. Yeah, like, yeah. Which yeah. is annoying because, again, it's one of those teams, and we had McLean, Walters, Long, and then McLean ends the game at centre forward. Another player who seems to play in all these silly, Why? silly Why? positions. <laughs> But um, we're, yeah. we're going to get into a little bit of the game itself. Obviously, the first goal. We want to just talk about that there if you want. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great, great, it's a great save by Seamus Coleman. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. No, Colin Doyle made a great yeah. save there from the header. Like all things considered, it's yeah, coming at him yeah. at pace down low. But you know, like, like you said, it, uh, Giroud had a running, a had a running start. He had a running start. Yeah. It's you can't give like, a yeah. Giroud a Gravity. Start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Pretty but much. you know, and, and I think Giroud has kind of been a bit of a, um, you know. People have kind of not taken the pace out of him, but he's always been like, ah, Giroud. Like, yeah, exactly. But like, if you put, he's. I've always said he's a good player. Yeah, he scored he's so many goals player, for Arsenal, yeah. um, especially from that position. You just yeah. can't. That type of action, that type of area, he's just unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. really. Um, he's a man. So dumb, dumb. Look, there's a reason. There's a reason Antonio Conte signed him for Absolutely. Chelsea. Yeah. Like everyone was just laughing, going off, going from Arsenal to to Chelsea. To, uh, Chelsea making a bad move. He's a great player. It wasn't really his goal. Player. His goal against Southampton in the semi final. The FA Cup. Yeah, but he means for, but for the size of him, he's six foot five. When Arsenal needed <laughs> you know? a, a player of his caliber yeah. towards the end of their sec, towards the end of their season in general, but towards the end of their second leg against the uh, Atletico, you know, I'm like this is made for you. Just put the ball up there, and let him head it. Yeah. You know, anything the dropping ball. You know, I think that was another thing yesterday as well. For a team that is so intent on playing long balls, we won no second balls. At all yesterday, every single ball we, that came down. I don't think whoever did. No, I, that's what I was. I, I just kind of noticed like, last night that you know it wasn't so much Long's fault, but he's going up against these big, huge centre backs. He's winning, maybe winning every second or third header, and it's coming down as a French player standing there. Yeah, like, but there's no Irish players around. Yeah. Partly you feel that that's why I admire Shane Long so much because if you look at any other type of striker that's in that position, they'd probably be getting yellow cards to get sent off. He very rarely gets in any kind of. Like 
trouble or the discipline's trouble yeah. be because he does all the donkey work but yes gets slated for I mean I, it must be selfish right for him yeah as a it's, a, it's a thankless task in, in many ways but I think there is yeah. questions over his, well, his quality back to, and yeah, stuff well, um, this, look, the, que you, the questions about his quality etc but it goes back to what we kind of spoke touched around briefly at the start there why not have Walters in the middle and Long on the right yeah. run, the guy running onto yeah. those second or runs, actual I think like yeah. if, if you're playing if you're, I'll doubt it well, yeah. anyone, you, yeah, but just get and Alan like, George have, in have, Odell's if you, position. If we're insisting on pumping the ball along, let have yeah. Walters hold it up, second balls, and have fast yeah. players. Run. Are we saying try, that try and be effective? Ireland should play players in their actual position. Yeah, yeah. This no, no, it's, it's not Ireland. Ireland. It's Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, like if, if you're playing, if you're playing a long ball, you're either hitting a target man, or else you're hitting the channels, and that's why Long's in there. Yeah. So I don't think they're trying to lump it up to head it down and have guys get the second ball. I genuinely think. O'Neill, it's a little bit like Leicester when they won the league. They hit the channels, they hit Vardy. Well, we don't do that enough. Though. Yeah, but we, that's the thing, you know. So what's the point? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> but what happens point. is, what happens is, we 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 get the ball, and if we get it anywhere in our own half, it's hoof, and it's just hoofed anywhere and anywhere, just into their half, so they can recycle and do it all over again. We'll win the ball and we'll just kick it away. Mm -hmm. It's just the most pointless thing ever. And when we do have the ball, um, anyone's kind of looking for any space. I think you touched on it off air, Brian. Um, Coleman was look uh, had the ball a few times and he was just no one running from. Yeah, so he can't have the no turn back and just pass it back to is, is that instruction? Is that what, is it that looks like it, instruction? It looks like it, look. Obviously, as well. Oh, I'm an Everton fan. I watch Coleman week in week out. He'll always play the ball up the line. Yeah. Yeah. He'll always look to run with the ball up the line if he knows he's going to get support. Yeah. Yeah. Or he can overlap as well as, he, as we were saying. He's looking ahead like John Walters. Like in the day, we well, love John Walters, but he's like what 35 now. He's yeah. Not the player he was a couple mm -hmm. years ago. Like he's not gonna be like, right, I'll give John Walters. He's gonna be three or four men here and gonna cross him. Like, oh, that's not gonna happen. To his credit, about Walters, I would like maybe to keep him in the squads. Maybe like an impact so kind of similar to the way Noel Quinn. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, Noel Quinn. Robbie Robbie King. King. He'd give us a lift. He was yeah, yeah, coming no, off the yeah. bit, coming yeah, What off about the on the on the other side of that? We we spoken about John Walters a lot. It's James McLean last night. Like, I, I, look, I, I disappointed just, yeah. season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Getting relegated, it'd be interesting to see where he goes now. Um, everyone wants him to go to Celtic. Yeah. Whether that's a benefit move, I don't know. Uh, it po probably it will be no, because will be. he would actually be getting first team football. And he'd be playing football under Brendan Rodgers. Yeah, well, as well as that, I think his career is almost is definitely at a crossroads now. It's like he's gone a little stale, as in yeah. we don't know, we don't really know what he's been through this a few years ago yeah. at Wigan. True, very true. He went through this yeah. and he kind of he's upped his game. Went down, kind of, you know, did mm -hmm. his trade, and then came back up. And he he was really good for for West Brom when he first came in. Yeah, uh, Pulis, I think, signed him, and lo really liked him. And he kind of went off him after he scored against Wales. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that Pulis really said that story. He came like, back in no under uh, Darren Moore and seemed to you know that well West Brom in general yeah, got a lift and he played well. But like I just early in the game we nearly conceded a goal because he gave away the ball, tried to beat a man. I think it was Tolisso in it. In a terrible position, you know, when it, it, all the, after two or after three two minutes. or three minutes, and they were on the attack, and I think Mbappe hit it just wide because I don't know what he was trying to do. Just you know, he tried to turn back inside. He said, just go out that way. Don't try to turn back inside against players this caliber. And, and then, then ten minutes kick. later, yeah, he nearly gave away. For, uh, he gave away a free kick and got booked for it. You know, but it just, you, you go back, and it's not that long ago now. Before when he when he came on the scene at Sutherland, and you know, it was travel manager. And, Oh, yeah. yeah, there we go. Um, and you know, remember the whole hoo ha and the whole excitement, really. It was the next big thing at the Look time, at this yeah. pair, yeah. and there was almost that like, was before um, Euro 2012. Yeah, exactly. Was, and there was such an injustice out. at Euro 2012 mm -hmm. that he wasn't playing. He wasn't playing. And do you remember, remember, I remember he'd come, on, he come mm -hmm. on and Trapattoni eventually it was one of the one times he almost bowed to public opinion and he brought him on. And, yeah. and I remember the ovation that he got at, at the Viva there it was incredible. And mm -hmm. you thought this guy is going to be a superstar, he's going to push us on. But without Sounded controversial and really just looking at it, you, you have to question what he offers the team oh, anymore yeah. because I, he used yeah. to be a player that was a, a the typical Irish kind of stereotype player. He plays in a, mm. a kind of middle to bottom Premiership League team, average player, puts a graft in, comes to Ireland, ups his game, mm. and becomes. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we're not really getting that I anymore. Think, I think in terms of what he offers, kind of going forward, like he's. I don't think he has intelligent football brain. I don't think he's technically gifted. What he has is pace, what he has is aggression, and what he has is an unbelievable delivery. And I think coming off the bench, mm. I don't think he... Like, if you look at O'Dowda, if you look at Brady, if you look at Robinson coming in, 
if you look at even um, Maguire, who's played on the left and right, um, you know, they're superior players technically, and that's what you need in the final third. And I don't think it's any coincidence that we are so poor in the final third and that McLean has started the last umpteen games. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying he's rubbish, I'm not saying anything like that, but I think his role should be coming on as an impact sub. That's where he was so good at Sunderland, and that's where I feel he's been so good for Ireland in the past. And a little bit like Stephen Hunt, like I'm not comparing them, but yeah. a little bit like Stephen Hunt, he'd give yeah, you a lift. Chicken. Yeah, but like, but, but, <laughs> but, but, but like McLean playing against a tired back four. Yeah. Like we saw it again, I know it was a friendly, but we saw it against Uruguay last year. He came on and just ran at them. And he's a great finisher of the ball. But in terms of creativity, in terms of relying on him and having him as the player that the team is built around, that is a horrible notion. The last time we you played know? the US was the same, wasn't it? He came off the bench. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's twice. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last time we played the US in 2015, beat them 4 1, and he yeah. came off the bench. And, and, and we almost twice. had a scenario where I think it was towards the end of Brian Kerr's era where. Mm. The plan B was bring on Ian Hart and Gary Doherty and really, really mm. go for them. Are we looking at that almost in a strange way with McLean or Wal- Walters being? Our, I'd agree. Yeah. In our, in our oh, well, like, if, if, if I'd prefer with Dowda on the left, yeah. and you know Dowda's a completely different player, all technical, whatever, and he's kind of you know turned the right back inside out, and then as Nick says, you bring on McLean with 10, 15 minutes to go. It's a complete or twenty minutes to go. It's a completely different yeah. um, player, and also the right backs like, like so tired. Like, like dare I say it, but. And dare I say it, but Aidan McGeady, probably one of the most frustrating players Agreed. of all time. Um, but if he scored more crucial goals other than that Georgia game, um, and if he had a little bit more bite in his tackle, would there be much difference between him and McLean? Again, just my opinion. Because I, I think they're equally as frustrating going forward. Yeah, but I would say that James, you, you said there like that James McLean's Footballing brain doesn't exist. I would say that Aidan McGeady has one of the best footballing brains. He just doesn't pull things off. Yeah. He just, yeah, he just hasn't got the ability, or maybe he hasn't got the ability, yeah. but maybe that's harsh, but maybe he hasn't got the nose to actually put what he can see yeah. in his head because he gets into the most unbelievable positions. He's got the trickiest he, ball. He, he can hang on to the ball where McLean doesn't have that ability. He's got that kind and of I'm not, Again, I'm not saying. Named yeah. after him, like, and like, I, think, I think McGeady's gone. I don't think he's going to play for Ireland again. Gone. But I'm just saying, like, I think they are equally as frustrating. Um, oh, I'd agree. The only difference is McLean has come up with the goods in the in the qualifiers where yeah. where McGee did. But O'Neill's quite loyal like that though. In fairness too, like if he did, yeah. he, he was our best player throughout the campaign. I mean, you'd argue with him or Duffy. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, especially but does that the say end, a lot about Ireland that James that McLean's our best, best player? player like, well, I, not no. really, because I thought McLean actually was outstanding for a lot of the games. There's a lot. There's a few games where he was very annoying too. Like you're looking at the Serbia game Serbia, where he was just yeah. losing yeah. the Austria game. game. Yeah. Um, losing his head like he kind of did last night and there's too many times where you know if he's losing his head like that he should be brought off yeah. like, I think he should just be brought off but in saying that I thought we were going to because the last game we played against the circuit we went the three at the back and I thought we are going to have the wing back system the thing is we're really really blessed in terms of centre halves and wing backs and if we were to bring that system in I think it could work um, but that would be said I think that leaves McLean out of the equation he Unless he's going to go for that stupid centre forward position again. Yeah, he could play. L- I I think he'd be so suited to left wing back. Left wing back. Or or left back. Like as no, a, no, as no, it. No, no. I think he'd be. Back. I think no. he'd be a brilliant left back. Just leave him on the left side. Just leave him over there. Would I, you trust I, him though? We've seen him against. Was it Mexico? He played left wing back and he was atrocious. Did you not give give away a penalty this time last year? Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, I I think he'd be a great left. <laughs> now that you say it, <laughs> I think he'd be. But he's he's a, terrible that he plays in that uh, position. I think he's much yeah. better as a you know. As, it's going to sound really bad. You have your Messi, Neymar, and um, McLean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you keep him, would you keep him there and don't have him tracking back as much? But I actually like when he tracks back and dives into the and wins the ball. Um, but how rare is that he dives into the and wins the ball? Well, he does, take your man's does leg when off. he's when, he, when he's tracking back and actually does it. But uh, if you're giving him a, and telling him, you know, you stay up there with the striker. So if anything does come up, we have a player that can. Like bringing it, bring it into play. The problem is, and I was on Twitter with this last night, was we need a striker like Pat Huben who could hold the ball up, you know, put his ass into players, hold it up, bring other players in, into play. We've had to see him there against, I know yeah. people say it's Bohemians. we had to see him against Bohemians. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the post didn't do too badly that game. But no. you, look at, you look at it, and I said it to you, like he was closed down on everything. He didn't give the defenders a minute. Every time they went to, uh, like, 
clear the ball. He was chasing down dead balls that were like, we're going to just go straight up to the defenders in the opposition's half. Then he obviously got his goal, but you can see when he misses a chance how angry he gets and how hungry he is to score again. And we, like, you look at Long, he's like, ah, oh, and that's it. But this was literally punching the ground in frustration. He's in mm. great form. You're picking Graham Burke in there, who he's got more goals than Graham Burke. He's an actual striker. We had three players there. I understand Hogan and Maguire. Hogan was playoffs and Maguire was um, injured. Mm. But, you know, if you're going to try out these players, why, why didn't you? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very glad you brought it up because, you know, we've we spoke of this off air and at various games together. We're both massive fans of Hoop and, and as a goalie man, etc., etc. But genuinely, I think. He also takes pictures of me with Niall Quinn. He does. There you go. <laughs> How's that for some trivia there, there for you? But look, joking aside, I think really he has all the attributes to be very good in that system that we spoke about. He's very, very strong. He can mm. run the oh, challenge. He's a big fucking ass. Like, it, oh, yeah. what he's <laughs> Jordan Henderson has stars. Like he's very adept at, at con, uh, contesting the high balls and the balls down the channel. He's fast. He's, a, he's in very good form. We spoke about players early that are in good form. Um, he looks like a, a natural striker. I think, why not give him a goal? Like, we spoke of McLean, etc., etc. He's not going to, never going to be a striker. Why not give someone like Huben a chance? Why yeah, I agree. In, in, interested to hear your. When you end up with James McLean up front, now I know it's a friendly game, <laughs> and I know it, whatever, but no, and, and options were limited. You know things are thin. Yeah, James McLean ending up up front on a night like that, kind of going, oh, lads, like you know, where are we? We're like, mm. we, and they were talking last night. Uh, Sadly, and, and and Duffer were talking about. We're just waiting for the next Robbie Keane. Now that next Robbie Keane might be Troy Paris. Hopefully, touch wood. He's more of a. He's, he's he's kind of more of a in terms yeah. of getting goals, I understand he's not the exact same position, but Adam someone that can it. actually get goals, either maybe. He'd be like, uh, he'd be more like a, a bail, um, yeah. Paris. And I think I really do like uh, either, either, whatever, yeah. either, either. <laughs> either, either. <laughs> he's, he's a player. Now I know he's only twelve, but I mean he's a player who can hold the ball up. Yeah. I cool. haven't seen large Irish player. Did, I not, hold did the we ball not up. say this in a video, or did I not? I said it in a video. Uh, and their their after match uh, after the. The game they played against the Hall. I actually said that in the video, which you can check out. Yeah, <laughs> but that's yeah, it. Yeah. You, you look around and go, where are the options? Like, okay, obviously Hogan yeah. had a decent enough season. McGuire a decent enough season. Both unavailable. Similar though, those two. Similar, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. If you had, if you had a Hoopin there with one of them, I mean, they, I, I, they may have even played together. Don't talk, uh, Hoopin and McGuire at one point. They may have. They would have, yeah. They would have for. Uh, I suppose he was first in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're would've also kept, would've kept McGuire out of the team. There's not a single player, you know, striker coming through or in the squad really, except for Long and Walters, who have any goals around. Like we're really, really struggling for goals. I think Hogan will come good. You think? Um, more games, a bit like Brown. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Because you look. I thought he looked. Brown, Brown yeah. only really had his first kind of real game mm. at Turkey. Yeah. He scored mm. his goal against Celtic, which is Peach. Mm. Um, and then he played against France. But like, I mean, you look at France, could feel probably three teams, mm. and the third team would probably still be better than their first eleven. And Very that was fair. And I felt that team that was well, playing last time was like our second slash third. That was the f- first time we ever lost at the Stade de France. Yeah. Like I know that we've only played there three, just the fourth time we played there. But like, you know, we gone there with a depleted team uh, against yeah. much better French sides, mm. and not lost. And obviously we played Sweden there, but. Just kind of thinking, no, for 35, 34, 35 minutes yesterday, you're kind of going, all right, we're doing actually all right here. But there was no point you were sitting there going, we could score here. Yeah, it's, it's that options, and that's why we look at the likes of Huban, etc. Mm. That's where we're stuck. But like from, um, you know, as we all know, myself and Paul get to a lot, a lot of games, League of Ireland games, so we're probably a little bit by and pushing the league. But I know personally, the, the one, when we saw the team selection to start, one thing I was absolutely almost gutted for them really was that Supple and Burke didn't get the start that yeah. you know why not give them a, a, a chance here and but I, I know Burke got on first League of Ireland player in 11 years and, yeah. and all that one for the stats etc how what did you guys think of his performance you, you probably were all delighted he had well, one but. great pass <laughs> that was, I mean like I know where it's in the pitch, like, it was, the so, pitch so, was so, underwater it was an by the time he came yeah, I mean like it was a beautiful pass but it was the vision to pick out yeah. that pass you're kind of gone no one else has done anything like that in this whole game, and he's been on for five minutes, and he's played this glorious pass. Yeah, but even when he played, um, again, I hate going back to the Celtic match because I think half the Celtic players were hungover. Yeah, <laughs> and our lads were maybe not as up for it. But I mean, I really felt Burke was one of the most comfortable players on the ball in that second half when he came on. 
Um, I didn't see that game, that's nice. Yeah, I was watching on a rubbish feed already on Facebook, but I mean, like he's he's comfortable on the ball. He's got that kind of, um, you know, good finishing mentality as well. But that goes know? back to the style of play and stuff and yeah. the performance. It's like, you know, Burke, Burke doesn't, or uh, Shamrock Rovers play decent style of football. It's kept on the ground for the most part. The same with um, Huben at, at Dundalk. You know, a lot of the teams now in the League of Ireland they have a, are keeping have a, the ball on the yeah, ground. They constantly try and pass um, it. It's the same with all the players in England. None of them go home to their um, clubs and play a long ball football. Mm. You know? Yeah, but in saying that, Keane and O'Neill were at that game, Rovers against Zundalk. And Zundalk are, are flying at the top of the table, and Rovers are struggling. And he's yeah. picking. I, I understand Burke's on, uh, like, on his own, say he's having a, a great season, mm. but you know, individually, but. I mean, Rovers aren't, and you look at the lock, he's flying and his team uh, are flying too. Yeah, both himself and the team are in such a confidence mm. through the form, which is... This is a bit conspiracy theory-ish. Okay, here we go, this should be good. This should be good, but because the lock are doing so well, and Rovers aren't, and Ro- yeah, so the really, lock I see play on mean. Friday and Ireland play on Saturday, is it kind of saying, all right, Huben, you're going to play for... Ireland on Saturday, so you can't play on Friday like the dog. Yeah, but they had an agreement with um, with Stephen Bradley. Um, I mean, they had an agreement. Like I, I was at the Rovers and Waterford game, and we interviewed yeah. Graham Burke actually as well. Um, which you can check the video on the channel yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. But uh, I went, I went in, and they were asking him about uh, Burke. Called up and he goes, "Yeah, I was speaking with Martin today. I was speaking with him again tomorrow and the next day." We have an agreement about you know how many minutes Graham's going to get and stuff like that. So, so is Graham Burke going to play for Rovers on Friday? Um, I assume so. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Yeah, it's his club, so you know, they, they need him more more than Ireland do. To be fair, he did that the other day though. Yeah, I suppose he did. Uh, the Celtic game was near. He was on the flight the next morning, and then he was over. He barely had time for a warm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a bit of a dash. To but I say like simple. Is he going to get on on Saturday? You'd, no, like, no you'd like to see him in a half. Yeah, you would definitely, yeah. even from his old personal point of view. But on the subject of goalkeepers, and we kind of rambled on about the squad because we haven't had that much to talk about in terms of the game, but we will have to cover the second goal. Uh, Talisa, wasn't it? Fe- no, it was Fekir. Fekir. Oh, Fekir, Fekir. sorry. Fekir. 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 That's a poor goal. It's a carry. Yeah, it's, it's a carries, bad week yeah. for them. It's, it's unlucky. Yeah, 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 it's unlucky. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, yeah. he's he, he's got the ball. He just hasn't had got a strong enough hand on it. Look, he be pushing he, away. If, if he does that in a, in, a, in a qualifying game, we'd never forgive him. He no. does it in a friendly, we'll let him away with it. Or Champions, Champions League final. final. <laughs> you don't know the Champions League final? <laughs> should should <laughs> Beckier have been closed down? Yes. It was too easy. The way he shifted the ball was too easy. Yeah. Um, but but that, Rice was up against him, I think. Rice. Yeah, and I mean, Rice will learn from that because... You know, he's 19, he's playing against these yeah. incredible footballers, isn't it? and he's had such a learning curve playing in the Premier League. Um, so, yeah, he'll, he'll learn from that, but he, he should have done better really with it. But it's disappointing, but like, I think he had a lot of decent saves given the conditions. Like, no, I, thought, I, thought what he said, very well. I thought what he said um, about Roy Keane after the game was good. Um, he's come out and yeah. said that... Uh, he thought Keane would have went mad at him, but he came up to him and said, well done, because it's about how you come back from the mistakes. Yeah. And he made like a great save. To be fair, he did, he did, yeah. a few he did come back so. and uh, do well. I just don't understand the point of being in the squad. Yeah. But, but, but we were saying, like, he was kind of there by default. Yeah. Um, like, last night we were saying, like, you know, we can't, we can't exactly blame him. He's just going to have to put in his best shift. He's not exactly... Now, to be honest, if we got to the World Cup, he probably would have been going to the World Cup. You know? because I mean, choice. Yeah, probably. Well, Elliot... Probably wouldn't have gone. O'Hara probably wouldn't have gone. So I think whatever goalkeeper had played last night, yeah, it would have been a bit of an onslaught in, in yeah. general. I think. Yeah, yeah. It, you, you'd you like know. to think though, in the kind of romantic way, you would like to see Supo get on or or O'Malley or have a half each, as well as mm-hmm. and we'll talk about this in the, the the match preview for the USA and, and the Stanton Eleven show. We'd obviously like to see O'Shea being put in and, and, and play the, the goal. Game. And go. Of course, play the goal. <laughs> yeah, but you'd look at it and say, if you go in a romantic way, I think I'd rather Shane Supple played. If he's ever kind of say this is his one time play for Ireland, I'd rather he did it in Dublin. I, I think he's good his enough. family in front of his friends. I think he's the best keeper the league's had since Brian Murphy, another ex Bowes player, mm. um, who actually made the Ireland squad while he was at Bowes. Um, never played. I think it was I, actually I, it was funny enough for the game against France in 2009. 
Um, yeah, yeah, bit of, bit of trivia. But I honestly think he's he's the best keeper the league has had in a long time. Like, Actually, yeah, well, talk to, you talk to anyone who follows the league, and all of them say, "Supple's best goalkeeper." Yeah, but the, yeah, the, yeah. the problem is, is, so many people out there going, "Oh, I'd love to see Burke, and I'd love to see yeah, Supple." And yes, Bowes and Rovers were playing the other day. Was it Senna? No. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, well, so, well, yeah. But there's a lot of like there's a lot of games people that they, they, they wouldn't even care. They, they have an international down the road uh, yeah. playing and the uh, standard, and they won't they won't go and watch it. And that's 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 the biggest issue we have as a country and as a nation in terms of us getting to the next level. We need to start bringing in more crowds and, and, and bringing in, it brings in more money for the league, brings in better players, which allows other players to learn from these better yeah. players and grow. The crowds are steadily, I think. They yeah, are well, let's hope with, with, with Supple and, and Burke involved so much as well that you know it creates a bit of interest back and more and more people will attend. Mm. It will make and to be fair, just uh, sorry to cut you off, Brian, but to be fair, we were a bit like that before, probably this season. We were a bit like, you know, all oh, League of Ireland, whatever. But you actually go to it and you start to see, you see these players. Uh, uh, and they said it on Soccer Republic last night, and Kieran Sadler. Uh, man has scored from 80 yards from goal. Yeah. Yeah. He, you know, he, I don't think he's too far away from call up either. Yeah, yeah it was incredible. No, it, it makes the his only, player more the only bright, thing, the only more thing against profile. that. Now, I, I know a friend of mine, her dad's the goalkeeping coach for Cork City, so she, she watches nearly every game. And she said, sadly, it can be, can be fairly frustrating, you know, at times. Well, every game um, I've watched him, he's changed the game. For a yeah. Whole set up either got my sister a goal every time. Yeah, yeah. And he's playing yeah. in, uh, he's going to be playing Champions League football. And he's an ex academy, yeah, ex academy bar. Good mates with Declan Rice. Yeah. Oh, and, and they've, 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 as I was saying there, if they're going into the Ireland squad, it makes them more high profile. It makes all of these players, oh, you know, Brendan's playing for Ireland. You know, the kids want to go and see him. Yeah. And they say, it's up, oh, he plays for Ireland. Yeah, I want to come down to it. your local game for exactly. United, exactly. So, when you look at, um, I was at the Pats and Rovers game, and uh, and Burke played that game, and Rovers won comfortably 3 0. We were at the game before, mm-hmm. played a couple of weeks before that, and it was the other way around. Pats, uh, Joe O'Brien got sent off. Yeah. But Burke, he, when, and we'd watched him against Wat- Waterford, but he didn't look as as, as, as as much of a level above. But when he came back from tra- from training with Ireland, the confidence, and playing with Ireland, he just. No one was getting near him. Mm. Everyone was trying to take him out. No one was getting near him. He just kept the ball simple. Yeah. He was turning away from people. He was kind of trying out a few tricks, getting the crowd going and stuff like that. And you can see, like he really, he really actually really cares about Robert. So I think he would hang around for a fee if he was to go anywhere. Yeah. You could see him. He was giving it all that to the crowd when he scored and stuff like that. Robert's are kind of building a good. I'd say a bit it, wobbly, a bit of a wobbly ride at the moment. A bit wobbly. Even Cavanagh, like Cavanagh's come back and looks slowly kind of there. Even uh, Boyle. I think they've got a long-term yeah. plan in there in Rovers. Yeah, but look, that's been the dissection. We yeah. call it a dis- dissection. The final word. The final verdict, the final word, whatever you want to call it. On the flood. On a, yeah, floody, floody Paris. Um, there we are, folks. Um, that's been our review. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Come on, folks. It really, really helps us get more content out. Uh, thanks to all the guys for joining us. And and we'll let, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Would yeah. you right or wrong? Would you change any of the players? Any, anything. Just let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.